In this lecture, I will introduce you to the field of microfluidics and we will address the question whether we can apply the physical laws that govern the physical processes at macro scales in particular for fluid flow to microsystems so microfluidics is defined as the study of is defined as the study of fluid flow and in general transport phenomena in tubes or channels which have at least one transverse dimension so here we have a channel and at least one transverse dimension should be on the order of 10 to 100 micrometers so in this case for example we have this length which is on the order of 10 to 100 micrometers for example we can have a rectangular cross-section microchannel like this where the flow is in the axial direction and either the depth of the channel or the width of the channel is on the order of 10 to 100 micrometers or both the depth and the width are on of the order 10 to 100 microns similarly you can have micro channels of other shapes such as a circular cross section channel where the diameter is of the order 10 to 100 micrometers now why do we want to study microfluidics so microfluidics is interesting because the fundamental physics which governs fluid flow changes rapidly as we shrink down the size of the channel this is unlike the case in microelectronics where despite the miniaturization of transistors the physical phenomena which governs the processes for microelectronic circuits is qualitatively similar to that which we find for macro scale systems whereas microfluidics is different because in fluidic systems we can quickly reach length scales at which the fundamental physics changes significantly now an obvious question arises whether whether the description of or the physical laws which describe macroscopic systems are still 
valid for microfluidic systems. That means we want to know that the governing equations for transport phenomena which we know well for macroscopic systems are they still valid for microfluidic systems? In short, the answer is yes. And we will address why that is the case. That is, the continuum description is valid for length scales for systems with length scales of order 10 to 100 micrometers. To understand this, we first consider length scales over which two molecules interact or a collection of molecules which will form a surface interact. Now the range of interaction forces between molecules in vacuum or let's say in a solution do not exceed a few nanometers okay for example if we consider two molecules in vacuum the van der Waals forces between these two molecules scale with the intermolecular distance L as L raised to power minus 7. So we can see that the attractive van der Waals forces they decay very sharply with L raised to 1 over L raised to power 7 where L is the intermolecular distance. Typically the distance over which these uh, for, uh, these molecules interact are on the order of few nanometers. Therefore, in the context of microfluidics, the intermolecular forces can be assumed to be localized. As if they are acting on a single point and this is not only true for molecules in vacuum it is also true for molecules in a solvent it is also true for polar and non-polar molecules and even true for simple and moderately large or complex molecules. That is, we can still treat the forces of interaction between two molecules as if we treat them for macroscopic systems that is we can treat them in a localized manner as if these forces are acting on a single point. Now this is the case for two molecules interacting but one may argue that if large number of molecules come together like this to form a surface then this can lead to large interaction force which can uh, interact over larger distance with a neighboring surface. Now this is indeed true that the cumulative effect of molecules on a surface can lead to large augmentation of the range of forces.
That is, if two molecules interact over a few nanometers, in case these molecules come together to form a surface, then they can interact over larger distance. Now, for example, if you consider van der Waals forces between two surfaces, unlike the molecules where the van der Waals forces scale as L to power minus 7, where L is the intermolecular distance, in this case, for surfaces, the van der Waals forces scale as L to power minus 3. However, in practice, what we see is that the range of forces between two surfaces does not go beyond distances of the order 100 nanometers. So if we are concerned about transport phenomena in channels where the dimensions are of the order 10 to 100 microns, then these forces of interaction between two neighboring surfaces which act, uh, which act over length scales of 100 nanometers can be considered to be localized just as we considered interactive uh, interaction forces between two molecules therefore microfluidic systems can be treated using methods that are analogous to those for macroscopic systems. Next, one can also ask the question whether the continuum hypothesis which we use to understand macroscopic systems is also valid for microfluidic systems. And again, the answer is yes. The continuum hypothesis is indeed valid for fluid flow on the scale of 10 to 100 micrometers. Why is that the case? This is because if you consider a fluid molecule, its typical size is of a few angstroms, which is 10 to power minus 10 meters, which is significantly smaller than the length scales of the channels which we are interested that are 10 to 100 micrometers. Also, the intermolecular distance between two fluid particles is significantly smaller than this length scale. So for liquids, the intermolecular distance is of the order 0 0.3 nanometers, whereas for gases, the intermolecular distance, so we are interested in the inter 
molecular distance for gases is of the order 3 nanometers. So for gases by intermolecular distance uh, we mean that or the measure is the mean free path that means how much distance does a gas molecule have to travel uh, on average till it interacts with another molecule. So that is the average distance and that average distance is about 3 nanometers for, for gases which is about 10 times larger than that for liquids. Now we can apply, uh, we can use the continuum hypothesis you know if we uh, consider fluid particles which are significantly larger such that the number of molecules in these fluid particles do not change significantly. So let's consider a small cube of length L. Okay, so this is the fluid particle on which uh, we consider the forces and write the governing equations. So we consider it as a cube of length L. Okay, and in this uh, cube inside the fluid which can be liquid or the gas on average we have n number of molecules and this number fluctuates due to thermal fluctuations because some molecules enter into this uh, volume and other leave due to random fluctuations but on average let's say we have n number of molecules now from basic statistics we have the result that the standard deviation of the counting number of uncorrelated random events which in our case is equal is the number of molecules in this cube so from statistics we know that the standard deviation of the counting numbers of uncorrelated random numbers is under root n therefore the relative uncertainty in the number of molecules in this cube or this cubic volume is under root n which is the standard deviation over the mean number of molecules the average number of molecules that is 1 over under root n so if we take the length scale of the cube to be 10 nanometers and for liquids we know that the intermolecular distance is about 0.3 nanometers so n would be L over this distance d raised to pi 3 so you can think like on average in one direction you have this length L and this is the intermolecular distance D and similarly you have in all three dimensions so therefore N is L over D raised to power 3 so we can calculate this value so L in our case is 10 into 10 to power minus 9 okay raised to power 3 and d cube is 0 0.3 to 10 to power minus 9 and we take a third power of this and this value is about approximately 4 into 10 to power Okay, so the total number of molecules 
that we have in a cube of 10 nanometers is approximately 4 into 10 to the power 4. Therefore, the uncertainty is under root n over n which is 1 over under root n and that is approximately 0.5% in our case. So what we can do is that we can see that if we take a cubic volume of uh, a cube of side 10 nanometers which is significantly smaller than the minimum transverse dimension of 10 to 100 microns then the relative uncertainty in the number of molecules in this small volume is really less in case of liquids therefore it is a good approximation uh, that the continuum hypothesis is still valid for uh, fluid flow at uh, micro scale. Of course for gases to get the same level of uncertainty you would need 10 times larger dimension of this cube to have same number of particles and same uncertainty in the total number of particles in the fluid particles. So, uh, uh, you know, for gases, you know, uh, because this uh, size of the fluid particle for which the uncertainty in determining the number of uh, gaseous uh, molecules, the number of molecules in a fluid particle is large, Therefore, you know, uh, at uh, these length scales of uh, 10 micrometers, around 10 micrometers, there needs to be certain changes that we need to apply for the boundary conditions uh, to analyze these gaseous uh, flows in microchannels. Nevertheless, the continuum approximation is still valid for the governing equations. And uh, in most of the cases, we are interested in uh, fluid liquid flows in microchannels. Therefore, throughout uh, our study, we'll assume that the continuum hypothesis is still valid. Therefore, what we see is that the forces uh, which act on fluid particles can be considered to be localized and the continuum hypothesis is valid. Therefore, the governing equations remain the same uh, as what they are for uh, transport phenomena on macro systems.